Welcome to a new episode of the Wool and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Wool and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany, where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, today I want to show to you what I've been working on in the past couple of weeks and present to you the new yarn collection which actually is the first one of 2024 and I'm incredibly excited to share this one with you. Um, actually, I've realized that we've dyed quite a couple of colorways in the past couple of weeks and I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm really surprised seeing them all together and how much it actually is. So I'll try to kind of keep things short so this video won't be incredibly long, but yeah, I'm happy to be back with new yarn in a new collection. Um, it's actually really snowy outside, so this is kind of magical right now because I can see the snowflakes falling and I had to tweak the lighting a little bit because it's, you know, almost too overcast and bright because of the snow. But it feels so cozy right now to sit here and uh, wear a good woolly um, jumper and show you the new yarns. Um, it really gets me into a knitting mood right now. <laughs> so how this is going to work? I'm going to start out showing you or telling you a little bit of how it's all going to work with the launch of the next collection. Then I'll give you an overview of the bases that we will have available. And um, yeah, then pretty much just show you the colorways that we've prepared. Um, ending it all with a little bit of admin chatter and um yeah you know some info on how the whole launch situation works in case you are new here um so first of all i wanted to remind you that there is another video that is kind of tied to this update um because we are launching a new yarn base called roots and that one is our new limited edition yarn. And I have recorded a whole video about this one that I'm going to link here and below uh, where you can find out everything about it, where I share all of my samples in depth, depth with you and where I show you, you know, tell you a little bit more of the backstory of it all. Um, yeah, but without further ado, uh, let me start chatting you through how the new launch will work so we are going to launch everything next week um so the last friday of the month of january which is the 26th i believe yeah 26th of january let me double check that yeah 26th of january at 8 p.m cet um so that is our german time zone here so you can double check that one with your time zones um and yeah for this update i tried to prepare a little bit of everything and try to make things like matchy matchable uh, with each other and i really hope that worked and yeah we also have our very new special limited edition yarn roots available in this update so that's gonna be really exciting um roots first of all will be available in three yarn weights so we will have a fingering slash four ply weight um a DK weight and an Aran slash worsted weight, um, which is the first time, not the first time, but the first like proper launch with like a larger quantity of an Aran weight yarn uh, for me. And I'm really excited for the reception you've been giving this yarn base so far, because I really wasn't really sure if this is something you're actually into. I never know how popular it actually is to work with Aran or worsted weight yarns. And I personally, I do prefer slightly lighter yarns usually um so that was why i was a bit insecure on how this is gonna be but um yeah judging from your feedback from the latest video you seem to be really excited about uh, this yarn weight and actually i have to say that knitting this sample that i'm actually wearing currently um out of the iron weight uh version of roots i have to say that i might start to love worsted weight yarns um yeah i might uh just try to work them more often because yeah i really enjoyed this one and this is so cozy and warm um by the way this is my rich rib sweater by manmi Choi of soap knits um i test knitted this one and the pattern is released by now and i worked this one in um the erin white version of roots um more on that in the roots 
video and I also linked um, my Ravelry project for this knit below so you can double check gauge and how much I used. I used like almost seven skeins uh, for a size five to have it a bit more, you know, generous and positive ease than what I would normally go for. Um, and you can find all that info on my Ravelry projects. Um, but yeah, this is my Ridge Rip sweater and I'm incredibly happy with it. It's so warm, perfect for this like minus Celsius degrees temperatures and snow right now. So I'm really in love with this one. And it's actually the undyed colorway of Roots. Um, yeah, but we are going to have more than that. And not only the three weights of Roots, we are also going to restock our new plastic free and non superwash uh, sock yarn Ovis. Um, in a couple of colorways and our cruelty-free uh, uh, silk mohair base cloud which is a blend of yeah as it says uh, silk, uh, some silk and mohair and this silk is actually cruelty-free so no silk worms have been harmed in the making process of this yarn which is pretty special about it so yeah um, without further ado I guess let me show you the colorways so after I've been kind of teasing you about it, let me start out with sharing a little bit more about uh, Roots and the colorways that we'll have on that base. Um, as a little intro um, recap, I'm also going to link that down below just so you can reference it, but we'll have the three weights of fingering being uh, 400 meters per 100 grams, uh, the DK weight version is 275 meters per 100 grams, and the Aran slash worsted weight is 200 meters per 100 grams. And this yarn is a woolen spun 100% Romney um, fibers sourced from a local flock that is based in on a small island that's uh, close to the German border in the Northern Sea. And so it has my heart because I'm, yeah, I have, I tell a little bit more about the backstory in the dedicated video, but I'm just a lover of all things around the North Sea because we used to go there ever since I was a little kid with my family and I have a lot of fond memories uh, of the region so it's very special to me and that's also why it's called Roots because it kind of resembles my roots and where I come from and what made me me <laughs> so that's why it's called that way and yeah, it's a woolen spun and I uh, actually sort these fleeces from a single flock um, of Romney sheep and to create the base color we actually blended all the different colors together, so the white sheep and the colored sheep and it resulted in this absolutely beautiful um, grayish beige. Um, so this one is the undyed colorway and uh, this is a very limited yarn, so we're just we just got one shearing of uh, you know one clip, and we are we just got this spun. And even though we might be able to get fleeces again from this flock, it will never be completely the same. So this is a limited yarn, and we are launching um, a big part of it now, and then a smaller one later. But um, more on that in the admin section. Um, but this is one of our limited edition yarns, so it might be interesting to know that this is not, you know, a standard base that will be coming back, um, but it's a limited one, just like the one that we launched last year, and that one was Heritage, and I thought I could show it to you just so you can see the difference in shade, because I was kind of, you know, I could have imagined someone asking me for this. So these are the two shades. This one is Roots and this one is Heritage, quite similar, although let me see if I can adjust the lighting a little bit because I have a feeling we could use a bit more light um, to see it even better. So Heritage is slightly more warm in undertone, whereas um, Roots is slightly more coolish in undertone and a bit more neutral even. So. Just so you can see them back side by side, Heritage is not available anymore. Um, so I just, but I just wanted to tell you in case you have some skeins of Heritage in stock still, or in stock, <laughs> in stash, <laughs> wow. Um, then you can compare it to it and it has a slightly different shade, also resulting in different colors. So now the light is going really downhill, so I really hope that we are gonna make this video work somehow. Um, 
But let me start out with showing that you the colorways that we've dyed. This one is the first one and it is called Ginger. And it's a pretty light, rusty, orangey beige that I think is really pretty and a lovely warm shade. And this one goes with so many of the others, so I really hope that it's going to be nice in a color work. I should maybe mention that this yarn is particularly great for color work, but I'm going to show you a couple of things around that later. But the, the palette was kind of designed to be very cohesive in a way, so you can use them all together. Um, but yeah, the next shade, uh, let me stay in the kind of warmish region. Um, by the way, I'm showing them on uh, one of the weights. Most of them are on the worsted Aran weight version. Some of them are on the DK weight version, but I'll have them across the bases. So you can choose whether you would like the colorways on like the four ply, the DK or the worsted weight one. This one is clay and it's a pretty warmish neutral like it's a neutral but with a warmish undertoned beige that I wanted to create to potentially uh, provide you with another base color for a color work that would go with pretty much everything. So yeah, this one is clay. Next up we'll have another new colorway and this one is Primrose. It's pretty close to our Hawthorne colorway, but slightly less saturated, I would say. It's a nice warmish light pink. And I really like it. I hope it's picking up on camera. It might look a little bit more orangey in undertone on camera, but I hope you can get the idea of the shade. Like a dusty warm pink is pretty much the shade of this one. Staying in the kind of pinkish area, um, we also created this colorway and it's called Heather. It's more of a purpley, dusty, lavender, pinkish shade. <laughs> Sorry for my crappy descriptions sometimes, but yeah, you get the idea. This one is Heather. Next up, we'll have another new colorway that I also really like for color work uh, combinations. This one is straw and it's like a like a golden beige, almost like a yellow, but very, very muted and like a desaturated yellow beige tone. So this one is straw. Oops, let me reach the other ones. <laughs> then we'll have some more of the like the reddish warmer shades. And this one is terracotta and it's like a beautiful reddish terracotta shade. So yeah, this one is terracotta. Next up we will have copper, and this is like a beautiful, rusty shade. Like pretty straight up rust, I would say. So this one is copper. And last but not least, we have the colorway Russet, and this one is like pretty close to our Auburn colorway, but lighter in shade. So it's another deep reddish brown, um, but not as saturated as our open colorway. So yeah, this is russet. And because I know that people are going to ask me about this, let me try and hold like the similar shades together so you can get an idea of how they look next to each other. Let me start with like the pinkish shades. Oops, now the light is going up again. Um, so yeah, the top is Heather and the bottom is Primrose. Then we have the neutrals. So below we have straw and here we have clay at the top. I hope you can see that well. 
And let me get down to <laughs> pick up the skein I dropped. <laughs> um, so this one, let me put it with the other warmer shades. Um, so here we have the warm reddish shades. Oh wow, this looks like a great fade if you ask me. Um, so this one is terracotta, then we have ginger, then we have copper and russet on the side. Just so you have an idea. I think this would make a great color work sweater. I love this one. Ooh. And maybe even combining it with another of the neutrals or so. Absolutely loving these shades. So yeah, those are the shades. Um, maybe I should also hold up the neutrals next to the undyed so you can actually see the difference and how they behave like next to each other so yeah and those are the colorways i think that we have on roots yes um so what i wanted to say about this is that we actually i think i should show one of the samples again to talk about this um this uh, yarn is particularly great for color work because it's a woolen spun um it really fills in any kind of gaps that might come from like a color work uh, knitting and therefore it creates as you can see in this uh, sample here uh, it creates a really smooth and homogeneous fabric that you know is great for color work so it really you cannot really see any kind of imperfections um that well so it really evens out um after blocking and it actually also um yeah just really works super well because it's so lightweight and it doesn't create a very thick fabric so you can still even like with the color work it can be a little bit stiff sometimes but with this one it's really like i don't know if you can see there is a drape still there and that's what i really like about it so that's why i'm uh i really wanted to promote this as a very color work suitable yarn by the way this sample i show this one in depth in the dedicated intro video about roots and i have also linked the info to my ravelry project below in case you're curious about you know sizing yardage and all that but i can already tell that i for a crop version of this sweat i only use about 400 grams um, of roots four ply um, so that is pretty nice and yeah, not a lot of yarn used actually so that's why that's also because it's so lightweight and a really good thing about it but i also know that you know with having a uh, like a um limited edition yarn that's not available like constantly it's tricky to you know make up your mind on color combinations for a color work and that it might be a bit tricky to yeah just choose um, the right combinations and upon swatching you might realize that some of the intentions you actually had are not really working in the way that you would like it to and therefore i also uh, researched a couple of um, like wider widely more widely available yarns um, that might go at least for two of the yarn weights that might go with them um, in case you're just lacking a color in the palette that I just showed uh, for a color work you can uh, you know add one of these yarns and one of them is um, let me see if I can show a ball is Pastoreta by uh, Joya Wool I hope I'm saying this right I'm just you know not very good with Catalan or Spanish or anything <laughs> Um, but Elena creates a beautiful sustainable yarn from a lo local sheep a breed that is or a sheep breed that is, that is local to her and so it actually fits the whole story of roots I would say and to show you we have made a little sample or a little swatch of some of the like the the colored the 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 cc's are actually uh, the joya wool and um the, the background is roots so you can see that it works perfectly with the gauges 
And yeah, in case you're lacking a colorway, definitely check out Elena's yarn. The Pastureta, Pastureta uh, base is the fingering weight base. So that one goes really well with Roots 4-ply. They are both 400 meters per 100 grams. So um, it's quite easy to combine them. And also the Pastoreta is available in um, 50 gram balls. So that's quite handy if you just need like one additional color. And um, you know, sometimes just 50 grams is quite a lot for a color work. And I think it's very nice to combine it that way. By the way, I, all these other yarns that I'm mentioning are not sponsored or anything. I am just sharing my thoughts because I know that how it works with, you know, choosing colors for a color work project. So this is the Pastoreta um, yarn by Choya Wu that works really well with um, roots fingering. And she also has a DK weight version. That one is, I think like 25 meters off in meter rich um, compared to roots DK, but um, yeah, I think it could still work. I haven't swatched that one because I don't own any balls of those, but yeah, with the Pastoreta, I can definitely tell it works really well. So, and by the way, the pattern of this swatch is the Nostalgia Tea by, oof, her Instagram handle is bloom.create, but I have forgotten the name. I'm gonna put it up here, <laughs> sorry. Um, but she designs beautiful things. I'm, I'm really ashamed that I forgot her name because I really enjoy her makes and her projects. So um, yeah, this is the Nostalgia Tea pattern that we used for the swatch. And I think it's really sweet. So yeah, so far about one yarn that you can combine this with and the other one I haven't swatched, but it, I'm very certain that it uh, is the same sensation as with the Pastoreta. And that one is Tuka Wool Fingering. Um, and that one is Woolen Spun as well, has the same meter rich and I have worked it quite a couple of times. So I know it has a kind of similar feel and I think it would be very a very good match with Roots 4-ply or with Roots DK if you choose the uh, Tuka Wool DK um, version. Although that one is 25 meters per 100 grams off as well, I think it's at 250 meters per 100 grams instead of 275, like Roots is. But I think that could work still, um, depending on what you wanna do with it and what gauge you're knitting it on. But yeah, so far about Roots. So these were all the colorways on our roots base. And before I get to the next section, I wanted to mention that we also prepared a couple of pattern suggestions um, for this base. Also some color work um, inspo patterns and those will be linked down below. They are grouped in a Ravelry bundle. I'm, you know, changing up things a little bit and I think it's a bit more accessible because I can keep adding uh, patterns to this uh, instead of just having a list that I would mention in a certain video. So this way I hope it's a bit more easier for you to access and to be inspired to potentially, you know, find a good pattern um, for whatever you want to knit with roots. So yeah, that will be linked down below. Um, and it's just one bundle for all yarn weights and I have added little notes on the different, like what weight would work for the pattern in my eyes. So um, yeah, that is everything about the patterns that I wanted to mention and, you know, yarn combinations that would work. But now I will definitely show you <laughs> the colorways on the next base. So the next base I wanted to show to you is our Overstock base. And uh, for those of you who haven't heard about it yet, it is a 100% non-superwash and plastic-free sock yarn that has been designed uh, to, you know, be a pure woolen yarn that still holds up through wear in socks quite well. And it's a blend of 50% Cheviot and 50% Jacob sheep fibers, um, spun to a slightly higher twist for durability. And it has a meter rich of 375 meters per 100 grams. Um, and yeah, we launched this one last year and it has been very warmly received by you folks. And I'm incredibly happy about that. And yeah, just actually just ordered a respin of it, a pretty large one, because yeah, I have a feeling this one is a keeper <laughs> and I'm 
incredibly proud because the yeah making process of this one was a very long one and I really wanted to you know get it to ex exactly the way I wanted it to be and it definitely is and I I really like that it's you know it has a lot of versatility for dyeing because I have it in a white base and a gray one and we just swapped out 25% of the Jacobs fiber for white or gray and therefore there's a bit more flexibility to create more shades um, on this and without further ado let me show you the shades that we dyed on Orvis. So first of all we have a restock of a very a uh, popular colorway that I also particularly love and I still need to snag a skein for myself I guess because I'm always like craving a pair of socks out of this one and this is Oban. it's a dark reddish brown that I absolutely adore I really like it so this one is Oban. Then next up we have another restock that was pretty popular last time and this one is Heather and you might notice that it's the same pinkish purple as on Roots. It looks slightly different because the undertone of the two yarns is different but yeah this is the same vibe of like a purpley light pink. So this is Heather. Next up we have a restock of our colorway Fawn which is a light like orangey beige. Very warm in undertone and I really like this one. Um, you know make me feel kind of like autumnal but I think it's also appropriate to wear it all year round. So yeah this one is Fawn. Next up, or no, no, we have more restocks. Let me put the restocks first. So this one is Iris, a pretty deep saturated purple. Um, and last time we had this one, it was dyed on the white base. This time we dyed it on the gray, just to switch up things a little bit. So this one is Iris. Next one, we have our colorway Golden Hour on over sock which is a deep mustardy greenish yellow love this one as well so this one is golden hour then we also will restock the two undyed shades I should show them still um, so this is the undyed acro and the undyed gray and I think they are really nice to, you know, pair with, for example, for like a color work sock or for uh, uh, if you wanted a contrasting heel um, or toe, it's pretty easy to combine them with pretty much all shades in the lineup. So that's that. Um, and I think, yeah, now we are getting to the new shades. And this one is terracotta, um, like we did it on the... Uh, roots as well, a terracotta y reddish shade, it's a tiny bit of a pinkish undertone, I feel. So it's not as you know warm as, for example, copper would be, it's more like a reddish, pinkish red. I don't know if pinkish is the right word, but you know what I mean, you get what I mean, you can see it, so <laughs> uh, that might make it easier. So that was terracotta and now we're coming to you with the new colorways. Um, let me start out with these. This one is straw. We had this one on roots as well. And I'm going to explain a little bit later why I tried to combine, you know, or repeat the colorways kind of between the bases. Even though it's difficult to repeat naturally dyed yarn or colorways. I know I said this a couple of times in some videos, but yeah, let's not get in, into that too much again. And this one is moss and it's something in between like a green that is impossible to pick up on camera and a swampy kind of brown, almost like a muddy color. I know that doesn't sound very glamorous, but I actually really enjoy this one. So this one is moss. It really changes in the light, like 
from a greenish tone almost to like a beige and almost like purple. It's strange, but yeah, it's the magic of natural dye sometimes. So, so far that is, no, we have straw and moss next to each other. That should maybe help. And we have one more neutral on the gray base and this one is sand. And I wanted to show them all next to each other. Maybe even if I can pick this one up again, maybe even with the undyed so you can see the difference between the neutrals. So here we have the undyed gray, then we have sand in between, straw here and moss on the side. So these are like the moody neutrals, if you want to call them like that. Um, and then last but not least, we have two more neutrals on the white base, which I also really like. Um, one of them being this one. And it's like a, almost like a greenish undertone. And I call this one ghost light. We had this one on our silk mohair base uh, cloud once and it's like a greenish undertoned neutral that's just perfect for any kind of color work combinations I would say. And then we have a one of a kind colorway and that's this one and it's a one of a kind because we dyed this slightly apricot, how do you want to say, vanilla-y shade with leftovers from our Christmas tree of this year. And I think it's just so pretty. It's a very subtle shade and I'm gonna show them this ghost light. This is the one of a kind, like next to each other so you can have an idea. It's a slightly warm yellowy beige. And I love it because, you know, we dyed this, we made use of our uh, Christmas tree with this one. And you cannot imagine how beautifully the studio smelled when we were, you know, preparing the dye bath and coaxing out the color of the pine needles. It was lovely and actually, very faintly, you can still smell it. So I really love that. Definitely when we were rinsing this, I could smell the, the Christmas tree still. It's very faint, but I think you can actually smell it still. So that's pretty cool, I think. And I think that was the last shade on Ovis. Next up, I'm going to show you the colorways that we'll have on Cloud Silk Mohair. So last but not least, we have a restock of our uh, cl cloud base. Um, as said, this one is a cruelty free silk mohair blend. And I have a whole video about this base that I'm going to link. Um, just in case you're curious about the making process, um, which was a pretty, you know, tricky one because it's not easy to source cruelty-free silk and also have, you know, a silk mohair yarn produced sustainably to my standards. Um, and therefore I had this one actually custom spun for wool and twine. So um, the whole backstory is in that video. I'm also going to link it down below. Um, but without further ado, let me show you if the light is okay. <laughs> let me show you some shades. So the first one is the undyed white or ecru. This is just the undyed and this one goes absolutely beautiful with the undyed roots. Um, actually, let me show you. Um, my mom knitted a pair of the amber socks by Vera Velimecki out of this uh, yarn combination and I think it's so pretty. It's really beautiful. I have also uh, talked more about these in uh, the intro video about roots and I'm also linking the sample project below so you can actually see more info what size I, we made and how much yarn was used. But yeah that's how they knit up the two like the undyed cloud and roots four ply knit up together and it makes an absolutely beautiful fabric um, and that's also why I tried to create a couple of shades that would match with roots so you can actually um, combine them potentially. Let me start out with the neutrals again I guess I think this is easier yeah okay 
the neutrals. First is the one of a kind um, that we also dyed with the leftovers of our Christmas tree. So this is like the matching shade to this one. And I think it's so cute. Uh, we had enough to make two dye baths out of it and so this is the result. A one of a kind on Oversock and on Cloud. And I think this combination would actually be perfect for a Lanes of Hearts shawl. Um, let me see if I can insert some footage of the one that my mom actually knitted as a sample of this because it's just a magical combination to use like a neutral on these two bases. The fabric is beautiful and it works really well for that pattern. Um, so yeah, would be perfect for Lanes of Hearts shawl, shawl, I believe. And yeah, those are the two one of a kinds. Oh, no, let me not drop this one into the... I have a little basket here where I put everything that I've shown. But I wanted to keep the neutrals so I can show them all next to each other. So this one is uh, clay. It's a neutral beige that we actually dyed to match clay on roots. And you will always see a difference and that is because the um, undertone of roots is a grey and cloud is a white yarn but they will still go very well together. It's actually quite a challenge to dye a matching mohair to a grey based yarn and I kind of found a way on how to tweak my dye recipes to you know match them as well as possible but it's always a little bit of a difference. So, so yeah this one is clay. And next up we have another beige, and this one is straw. Um, but it has turned out a little less yellowy in undertone, I would say, than it did on the other bases. Let me show them. So this one is straw on roots. So it's slightly less yellowy in undertone, but I think it would still make a pretty good match. Um, or even with clay if you wanted a slightly darker mohair then it, it, it would be with the clay colorway. Now because I know it's always difficult to imagine let me put them up next to each other like in a gradient form. Um, so this one is the undyed. Then we have the one of a kind next to it. Next we have clay and then here we have the straw colorway. Hope this kind of gives you an idea of how, whoops, how they are differing from each other. But yeah, those are the neutrals. Um, next up, I'm going to show you like the pinks. Um, and here we tried to recreate the same shades as well. So this one is primrose and it was dyed to match the primrose colorway on roots. It turned out slightly more pinkish in undertone, but yeah. That's and next up we also did the Heather colorway, which is slightly more purple in undertone than Primrose is. And we have dyed this one to match the Heather colorway on roots. And then again, next to each other, Primrose and Heather. So yeah, hope this gives you an idea of how they are looking um, next to each other. And then now we're down to the last two shades. Um, one of them being this one, and this one is copper. It is It was dyed to match the copper colorway on roots. And it's a beautiful reddish brown. And I think it could also match terracotta super well. So this is kind of, I don't know if you can see, it's very difficult to hold them up in this light, but yeah, here you can see. It would match both pretty well, I think. 
And last but not least, we have our colorway Oban on cloud silk mohair, which was a big challenge to dye, if I'm honest. <laughs> but I'm happy with how it turned out. It's beautifully saturated and it would match the Oban on Overstock incredibly well, I think. So this one is Ovis and this one is Cloud. But I think if you are not minding like a little bit of a contrast, you could also combine it with Russet. I think this would also be super pretty and very autumnal. So this one is Russet on Roots and this one is uh, Auburn on Cloud. And a last combination I wanted to show to you, now I have to dive into this basket again, is that also the two beigey shades would match, I think would make a beautiful match with the undyed um, roots. It always looks a bit more contrasty when you put them next to each other, but as you could see with uh, the pair of socks I just showed, where it was the white with um, the undyed roots, I think it's you know, once you knit the two strands together, it kind of models it all together and yeah, the contrast isn't as big anymore. But I think we did it. I think those are all the colorways uh, and I'm incredibly excited to hear what you think of them. I'm so happy to launch Roots uh, because this is so dear to my heart. And if you haven't, I really want to warmly invite you to watch the video all about it because I put a lot of effort into that one and so I could show you you know how it would knit up and we had so made so many samples and especially with the new weight available that we never had before it was very important to me to knit um, another sample in this one and I couldn't be happier with how it turned out um, so yeah if you want to see it also in action and how I wear it like not sitting down but standing up you can Watch the video um, and I have summarized everything below. Uh, if I missed anything and there is a question coming up, um, you can always email me at hello at woolentwine.com. It might be a little bit tricky to reach me via Instagram DMs or YouTube comments uh, because those are a bit hard for me to moderate, especially in shop update weeks where there are a lot of tasks in a day and not enough hours somehow. <laughs> So yeah, I really, really, really uh, would appreciate if you could choose the email way. That's the easiest to reach me for any kind of questions. And yeah, I hope that also the pattern suggestions might be helpful for you in case you're unsure about what to um, work with these yarns. Um, I also added a couple of suggestions of uh, combinations with cloud silk mohair. So I hope that's helpful. And yeah, as mentioned, roots will be very limited. I have tried to limit the, the amount of colorways so we could have more per colorway, um, but still we don't have a ton of this. And um, yeah, if you're into this one, I'd recommend being in time for the shop update, which will take place next Friday on 26th of January, 2024 at 8 p.m. CET. Um, I will also put up uh, a reminder on my Instagram and uh, you can sign up for my newsletter, which I would generally always recommend because there are some specials sometimes. Um, but I also send out a reminder once uh, the shop update is live. And um, because I know we have a lot of yarn weights and bases available in this update, I also wanted to mention the um, little uh, how do you say, drop down choosing menu on our shop system, which we've just recently implemented. You can pick the bases that you want to be shown um, from there and then you don't have to scroll through the whole stock, but you can, you know, click, for example, Ovis and then you will see everything in Ovis or you can check Roots DK and then you can, you know, pick um, from there. It might be easier so you don't accidentally buy the wrong weight um, of roots because, you know, it can be hectic with shop updates and there are three weights. I know it can be a little bit tricky, um, but yeah, this should be, should, should make it a little bit easier. And yeah, I guess that is it for today's video. I uh, hope you enjoy it uh, just as much as I do. I'm incredibly excited to have my first launch of 2024 again. It feels like a fresh start and 
yeah, I can't wait to see what color combinations you might choose or what patterns you might choose. Um, speaking of patterns, uh, one last thing I wanted to remind you that with the intro video about roots, there is a little giveaway running on where we're giving away a full sweater quantities of one of the weights, depending on what uh, pattern you want to knit, of roots in the undyed colorway. And to enter the giveaway, you only have to go to the video and uh, let me know in the comments below what um, pattern you'd like to knit in what base and also subscribe to my channel on YouTube. And yeah, that is mandatory. So please, if you uh, haven't yet, you have to subscribe to my channel to enter the giveaway as well. I just wanted to uh, remind you of that as well. And the giveaway will run to, until after the shop update. So I will draw a winner on probably like the 1st of February or so. Um, so yeah, that is how it's going to work. And I really hope that this way I can give something back to you who are, you know, supporting me in what I do and enabling me to create yarns like Roots that are so dear to my heart and that are, you know, something so local and in my eyes very sustainable which makes me very happy to contribute to the knitting world but yeah let me stop rambling here and wish you a wonderful day um happy shopping next week and um until then i wish you the greatest week happy knitting bye bye <music>